Hello? Hey, Matt, can you What's hear me? What's up, man? Very well. How you doing? Good, good. Oh, my God. Everything didn't crash. That's my favorite part. It's just actually Dude. works. <laughs> I was hoping the same thing would not happen for me. I had to do a bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah. man. This, oh, dude, I'm gonna, we're going to talk so much about like just streaming and stuff like that because I Let's feel do like, it. like I said, you're kind of like the king of the metal streaming. Oh, world. stop, man. Um, Thank you. I, I just faked it till I didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> Very relatable, except I do it by reacting to TikTok nowadays. Um, but yeah. Heck yes. But nonetheless, Matt, thank you so much for taking time to come hang out. Welcome, you know, you and everyone in your community. Um, thank you so much, man. First of all, congratulations on the new album, man. That was an absolute thank you. banger, man. It, it really Thank was, you very much. It was a great follow-up to what the Dead Men say. And I know that album pretty well by now. <laughs> awesome, man. Thank you so much, dude. I really appreciate it. Yeah, we're very happy with it. We just thought once again, let's make exactly what we want to make. And selfishly, let's not think of are people gonna like this or people gonna dislike this. Let's just make what we want. Hmm. And I think when when a band goes to that and they they truly just make they imagine themselves as that local band first ever getting in the garage together and making the kind of music that they want to hear that doesn't exist yet. Right. That's when you really distill yourself down to truly the essence of the band. Yeah, it, it had a very fun, almost like raw aspect to it, but still, of course, like Thank super you. professional. And it, Thank it, you. it really felt like kind of the culmination of everything you guys have been working on working towards it really felt like the next chapter from what the Thanks, dead men say and i want to really ask appreciate you that. What, what what was kind of the difference in terms of i guess the writing process because there's a lot of new factors right there, there was covid i mean you were, you were still streaming on twitch when you were doing what the dead men said but maybe even you know more so more intensely and everyone's now kind of on here especially because covid was hitting were there any different writing approaches or different things that were kind of happening that were actually affecting the writing process because of Twitch and the environment like that. Amazing. The last three records we've done um, was they all happened while I was already streaming on Twitch. So every single record was a total secret, which I loved. Right. Like even though I'm this this on all the time and and we're this plugged in all the time, a couple of people could tell. Like a couple of my main moderators could tell. They're like, all right, the schedule is a little bit different. You're right. a little bit shifty about what you're doing in the afternoon. We have an idea. You're making a record. Mm -hmm. um, but what's been amazing is for the most part, 99% of the people in the channel for the last three records, I stream during the day. Would go to the studio and then sometimes come back and stream a little bit more in be on the, like the in betweens. Um, as far as the writing went for the last three records, it went back to that. I'll, I'll go backwards even further. Mm -hmm. When we released Silence of the Snow, I love that record. I'm proud of every record we've ever done, mm -hmm. but there are like my my personal least favorites of the favorites. Right, so right. Silence, Vengeance, and Crusade. I love those records, but all three of those records, it was either myself for the Crusade or a producer for the latter two. Hey, let's not go too far here, here, or here. Let's stay in this box. For me, mm -hmm. for Crusade, it was like a conscious rebellion against everything we just did in Ascendancy. Like people loved Ascendancy in the UK, they loved it in the States. Um, but I kept seeing like people not taking it serious as metal band. They're like, all right, these guys are an emo band, but they're purely going off my hair. <laughs> right. Like, like, dude, that record is not easy to play. Like, I, I can guarantee you most of those gatekeeper metals guys that I used to be one of them too when I was 15, 16, they could not play Suffocating Sight. Oh, yeah. like I, I will guarantee that they can't play that song. So in my head, I was like, I was 19. We just released a sentence. Instead of thinking all the good, I was like, well, I want to prove to them, you know, we do know what we're talking about because this is more death and martyr than it is, you know, what they think of an emo band. Although I did love, like, what's interesting about me is I always, while I was listening to satanic black metal, I was also listening to Christian metalcore. So it's like, I feel like those two <laughs> mixtures of, of Satan and Jesus and, and Viking stuff at the same time and pagan stuff and, and being into a little bit of everything, being into emo and also being into death metal and also being into mm. metalcore that mixture of everything and now i'm seeing like so many more open-minded people these days that's what helps create ascendancy so i want to show them i was like all right i'm going to rebel and show them there's going to be no breakdowns there's going to be no screaming it's going to be a thrash record there's going to be barely any double bass this is going to be like a thrash record right and that's what the crusades decision was that was like i was like oh, we're going to rebel against everything we just did and show people that we know what we're talking about we're metal through and through mm. so the people loved ascendancy we're like what just happened and then we got a whole new slew of other fans then maiden yeah. brought us out on tour like all right we like this record we're going to bring you guys out uh, vengeance and silence. Silence, I blew my voice out. Thought I'd never be able to scream again. So that was the function of not screaming on that one. Mm -hmm. But those three records I mentioned all were let's not go too far here, here, and here. And let's also not do vocal pre production. Now, I know that sounds like a very trite and trivial thing. A lot of bands don't do this. That's being in the room together with your band, making sure you can sing and scream everything as if you're about to go on tour and not go do a record. Mm -hmm. Like, make sure you've got the lyrics in muscle memory form before you ever set foot in the studio. A lot of bands writing in the studio, that's fine, but it's not really like the true distilled metal band or, or modern metal band vibe. So, after silence, I looked at it and I was like, what 
have we done different throughout our career? I noticed that Ember, Ascendancy, and Waves, Shogun, we just made the kind of music we wanted to hear in the room together, muscle memory, did the vocal pre-production, didn't think limits, didn't talk limits, just made what we wanted. Right. So I said, let's go back to that. It's not a matter of revisiting a style. It's just going back to that ethos, that original, hey, we're a local band now and our parents' garage, let's make music. <laughs> and that's what's the vibe of silence, mm -hmm. what the dead men say in the court of the dragon were. We never said it's writing time either. It was just when riffs started surfacing, mm -hmm. we started capturing lightning in the bottle. We never said we need to make a record now. I remember Alex flew down to try out with us after we did the set better than we, we've never heard in a drummer play or stuff like that before and we're like all right Dude, uh, here's some insane. new things yeah, he's insane <laughs> that's what i love man yeah. people there's no question they're like ah that's what you've been looking for your whole career mm -hmm. alex is the guy he's the one he's the one he's gonna be with us forever and so when we heard how great he did across our catalog of one through seven we're like hey we want to show you some new material are you down to jam it and we showed him i think it was sin in the sentence was first okay and coincidentally, that was also the same song he tracked in the studio first. I remember we had the drums set up and we had all the tones ready to go. And Josh was like, all right, we're going to do your warm-up take before we actually start drums. Mm -hmm. Finish the warm-up take. And Josh was like, oh, that was perfect. I think that was it. <laughs> so just like one take, first take, that was it. Um, so the last three records have only taken us two weeks to track each one because we come in so prepared. Damn. Like all this time that I'm, I'm streaming, 75 to 90% of the time, it's me rehearsing what I need to do. Mm. It's me rehearsing, singing, screaming, guitar playing trivium stuff essentially so the rest of the guys have that same ethos and anytime we need to work if it's time to go write a record tomorrow it's time to go on tour tomorrow we're all in shape at all times it's 365 365 days a year conditioning it's never i'm never vocal time i'm gonna take a rest i didn't take a rest after metal tour of the year got home on a friday streamed by monday singing and screaming again so i never never take a break when i had breakthrough covid i still sing and screaming on stream just never taking breaks to to make sure i'm keeping that training up at all times that's no that's amazing Matt. and i, I want to talk about your schedule in a second but yeah i mean that's that's kind of a testament to being i, I kind of categorize like that early 2000s metalcore era is that's some of my favorite music ever created right like you guys all that remains kill switch engage right like, like all those bands and it's really a testament that you guys have come from that era and are still going stronger than ever. Like they're, those band, a lot of those bands are not, you know, doing that. Like a lot of the bands that were doing the five, seven, eight, the fun breakdowns, the catchy chorus, you know, with that very like almost powerful sound and not as much kind of the higher, you know, more modern mm -hmm. like post hardcore singing stuff. Mm -hmm. They're 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 they 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 they're not kind of doing that same stuff anymore. So the fact that you guys are still going, hitting strong. And weirdly enough, I'd even say almost sometimes getting like heavier and more technical and dynamic with some of this stuff. Like that's that is such a rare occasion. I think that's a huge part of why you guys are still sticking out to this day. Aside from like you kind of mentioned, you had all these very unique um, influences, right? Like I can hear the blackened kind of influences here and there with some of the stuff, especially the chords. And you throw in a lot of this stuff, as well as even like I can hear some M Milo Death, like some Inflames, and and of course Metalcore in itself. And it's really cool hearing that unique combination in a band that still has that like spark, <laughs> that energy, because it's it's so rare. That does thank not you so much, happen. man. So that's absolutely amazing <laughs> to see that you guys are going strong. Like I said, last album was a banger. I appreciate it. Thanks, and, man. Um, I'm super happy you guys are still just just killing it. And I want to ask you yes about your schedule. You're a man of many hats, man. Like, of course, you <laughs> yes, have Trivium, but I see you're on Twitch five days a week, twice a day. How long, how long is it usually two hours, both of those streams? Um, the morning one is now 8.30 to 11. The afternoon one is now 3 to 4. So it's four hours a day. Uh, oh four hours a day, God. five days a week, <laughs> off tour. And then on tour, I do seven days a week, one to four streams a day. You stream more than me, and this is my job. <laughs> like, is this being <laughs> on? Like, that's crazy, right? And, of course, you have family, too, and kids and all that. Like, how... How do you balance? Are you like a calendar dude that like, you know, every single date is specifically set this time, this time, this time. I need to get this done by this, by this. Or are you more just kind of adapt, overcome and just deal with things as they as they happen? Um, my dad is a Marine. My mom's Japanese. So they're two of the most cultured, regimented oh, yeah. people ever. So my whole life, I've always had that. And I've always liked it. I never fought against it. I never didn't like it. I, I meet some people like, man, too much schedule or too many things to do would freak me out. But I like having a very specific schedule. And now having twins, I realize that babies, infants, children, and adults, we all need structure and we all need to know what's going on and when's going on and what's happening. And we need to be able to work at that. So 
I live a pretty precise schedule. I mean, we're up at the same time, eating at the same time, streaming at the same time. And I like that a lot. I really do like that a lot. I, I gained that from obviously from my parents, from realizing what kind of practice methods that I need to do. But a big thing of it was Brazilian Jiu Jitsu that I've been doing for about nine years and you know, classes on a specific time. And when I got into it, I, everything I get into that I love, I go really hard. When I first got into it, I essentially hated it for the first year, didn't understand it for the first three years and just kept getting my butt kicked for the first five years. Mm -hmm. And it was like year six, seven, eight, nine that it started really kicking in, but I stuck with it. And when I first started, I was doing five days a week, two times a day jujitsu. And that was the same kind of thing to get good at it because I know it takes two to four times as much effort for me to get good at something than the average person. I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's an oh, attention okay. issue. I don't know if it's, it, yeah, I don't know what it is. That's why I do so much. And when it came down for the singing and the practice of the streaming, I remember I first started streaming like Overwatch on a PS4 to like two people a day, befriended some people from Twitch. And I said, I'd love to stream more because I love everything about Twitch, but I can't because I have to rehearse vocals mm. one to four hours a day, five to seven days a week. And my friend Brandon and John, they said, why don't you stream that? I said, no one wants to watch me play guitar exercises every day and do vocal exercises and play the same trivia songs every day. Like, I bet you they do. Give it a shot. <laughs> yeah. And that's that was four years ago. And then that's when everything shifted. And one of the early things that Brandon told me is like, consistency he's like whether it's you just stream two days a day two days a week or five days a week have that schedule so people can adapt to your schedule um and when he said that i was like that's easy for me because once i incorporate something into my life and i and i figure out my formula of doing it then it's very easy like once i've created the habit it's easy for me to keep it um i like to practice everything precisely as it should be and then when i do the thing this is the term I'm using for the way we wrote the last record loads, the last couple records, organically improvise. So mm -hmm. same with jujitsu. I like to learn exactly the way it's supposed to be, but when I'm grappling or when I'm sparring, I kind of throw that out the window and I'm like, all right, I'll rely on the muscle memory and allow this to happen. Same thing with all my singing. I was singing and screaming wrong for my, from 1999 to 2014. And that's why I blew my voice out. Right. So I knew I had to first unlearn that 15 years of singing and screaming incorrectly and then relearn that amount of time. That's why I put in so much practice to unlearn that stuff and relearn it. Um, I remember I had one singer who said to me, he's like, isn't that incredibly unpunk rock to practice that much on your vocals and, and that? And I was like, I need you to think about it this way. I was like, when I walk up on stage, I don't have to think, can I hit this note? Do I have the stamina? Do yeah. I have the lyrics remembered? I get to just enjoy the show. I get to unplug mm. and just improvise and enjoy the show. So I think in turn, it's actually the most punk rock or the most rock and roll that I don't even have to worry anymore. Right. So I'm not sitting in my head like, oh man, can I do this? Can I do this? And it's still, even with all this practice, that will still happen sometimes. So I, I feel like it's one of the most liberating things to be rehearsed and practiced for everything that you do in life. And luckily all four of us in the band feel that same thing that's it that's incredible that's also a very rare thing to find i think in the music industry is, is it, you know, very people, very yeah, people that are like always like 100 percent prepared um that they're always on the grind they're always doing something and that's why it's like i always i tune into your twitch and i'm just like how does how are you doing this right now like, <laughs> like I, you know you were just on tour doing this you're preparing you just released out and it's, it's so incredible to see that that grind it's very motivating that's the thing Thanks, too man. and the thing I also like, I know you were like the probably the biggest, I'd say, proponent of kind of the exodus of or not exodus, but bringing people to metal Twitch, which was really cool. Just seeing, especially during when COVID started, it was like everyone was like, What's that? What's, what's Matt doing? And then they're watching you on Twitch, and it's like, Oh, like, what's this platform kind of thing, you know? And it's it's, it's yep. really cool seeing, especially during these past two years, like, I'd say, like, the more pure music industry side of things com collaborate and combine with. The internet, you know, YouTube, Twitch, and and that kind of world, because that was not really a, a thing, you know, two two years ago. I'd say, you know, it was very traditional. Oh, labels would go, who are these stupid, you know, YouTubers that are taking our songs and playing them, or <laughs> or you know, vice versa, you know, on Twitch, like who are these streamers that are playing our songs? Like, get get out of here, kind of. And you know, within these last two years, it's been very much like oh, this is marketing, you know, like this is where <laughs> people kind of yep. are. This is where we can kind of showcase our bands and our and people's music. And yeah, you, you, you were a huge part of that. I remember even myself watching you and being like, well, I'm on YouTube, but like Matt looks like he's having so much fun. I got to get on this, <laughs> you know, and I, I grew up also as a gamer. So I was always kind of on Twitch, but never really thought of streaming. And how, how is that kind of huge influx of people coming over? And I'm sure also 
uh, everyone asking you like a million questions of how to set up stream labs and and all that <laughs> at first and, and did you even expect that to happen at all i mean it's it's amazing i'm really happy that when it did happen that people were willing to ask me like i said hey, any musician that wants to figure out how to get their music out there on this platform or has any questions about this i'm down to help you uh mm -hmm. and luckily we're able to make a bigger message like after that like first i'd have a lot of people contacting me then with twitch if you go to help.twitch.tv type in music it's a bunch of videos of me explaining everything right. from the setup to how to do it to the ethos of it same thing the stream labs i've been able to do uh yeah i never imagined things like being covered in New York Times or Bloomberg or Forbes <laughs> or Business Insider or TechCrunch or all these things for, for streaming, which is amazing because we've historically, you know, now this quote's biting me in the biting me in the ass because I always used to say we're only the band that's talked about by the people that support us. Right. And we're not a press band uh, with the exception of the UK for ascendancy. Like we've, we're not like the magazine band. We're not the band that other bands talk about. Mm -hmm. But with this new record and with the channel, that's kind of all flipped around. So now I can't say that anymore, which is pretty amazing. It's amazing that people are, you know, noticing that we don't do this just for us. Right. And and every time people have always said like, hey, Matt, I want to learn what that is. I've said, I'm here to help. Let me know what you need to know mm -hmm. because I want everyone to do well. And that's always been the same thing we feel for the music industry. We've always believed that if other bands around us do well, we do well as well. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like it's been very... It's good to have friendly competition. It's good to be like, I want to do better than that band live, but let's let's keep touring together. Let's keep doing the thing. I remember when we were younger, you know, being bullied by a lot of our favorite bands because we were young and we were very ambitious. We said we're going to be like a giant band. So a lot of people had a problem with young kids saying that, but yeah. we had the work ethic to follow and we had the music to follow and the live show to follow. So it was strange times, but back to back to the good stuff. Yes, it is really interesting and amazing that I've been able to help out a lot, but I started streaming four and a half years ago on Twitch. Four years ago, I integrated the music stuff. And it really, like, it was little peaks and valleys. Yes. And really when the world shut down was when everyone was like, I'm home. I can finally <laughs> yep. check out this thing Matt's been talking about for two years. That's when the channel blew up. And then, you know, people, are, as they get back to work and school and all that stuff, it's kind of leveled out again. But that's the big thing. It's, you, have to, you have to love it. And I, I truly love it. And mm -hmm. through the ups and the downs, like, I never really think... I don't worry about the numbers. I just like, I'm going to be doing this anyway. I'd rather have people with me. I need to rehearse anyway. I'm probably going to be gaming or writing music anyway. I would love to let people in. Like the thing I was just working on um, a second ago, that's a song I'm working on. It's going to be Floor from Nightwish is singing on it. Oh, Hannes from Sabaton is playing drums. Stream. That sounded so Thanks. good. That's going to be insane. Hannes, yeah, Hannes from Sabaton on drums, then myself on music. And I was like, I want to do something that no one would expect of the three of our bands something very different right and just doing fun weird collabs like the th the amazing thing i did with mike shinoda uh with richard marks um dead mouse and i are gonna do a track together just like mm -hmm. strange things that maybe i couldn't normally do with trivia not even that i couldn't do but things that thanks to this connection mm -hmm. and always being around and being so accessible it's it's been nice to like again organically improvise but organically improvise once that mechanical precision practice has been put in beforehand yeah yeah i, I know exactly what you mean and i mean it's 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 a whole new feel of community i mean even myself still being in the internet realm of, of music and coming from there like youtube is great but it's like all like people comment right like you see a comment and it's not real time and it's like okay like, and there is live streaming but it's very different <laughs> you know and you yeah, go on yeah. twitch and it's like people are there right now like hi people yep. all there right now like it's it's so cool to see that and have that interaction and i think you're absolutely right like there's there's obviously no special or, or formula to make streaming work but mm -hmm. i think the entry to barrier is no doubt loving it you know mm -hmm. uh working your ass off like working really hard and consistency like you yep. mentioned before. And that's something that I noticed a lot of musicians might come on here and sometimes they're like, I'm so, I, you know, like, let's go. Like, this is what everyone's doing now. And then they're like, oh, <laughs> this is Yeah, different. it's a lot of work. It's, yes, it's, it's very different. Yeah. Yeah, there's like, I remember when, when pandemic first started happening and like, you know, seeing like the Zoom jam videos of like people like going all the hell out. There's like, there's like a, a balance of it because right. there's not someone in the room. You kind of got to figure it out. Um. Yeah, it, it is very different. And it's it is as hard as getting in a van and deciding to become a new band all over again. Oh, it yeah. is that difficult. Um, and there have been many times where I'm like, how are we streaming download for free right now from this backpack? And no one like not really anyone's watching. Yeah. Like, <laughs> how, how are there? How is there 50,000 people in this crowd and only like 100 people watching mm -hmm. us do this? But that's just the reality of it. Like people have lives. They've got kids. They've got jobs. They've got school. They've got all these things going on. So you just mm -hmm. you got to love it. And, and if I could add one thing to your 
perfect list of everything. It's it's community. It's like you yes. have to love having a community and you already have an amazing community from your channel. And I always say that the trick is and the difficulty is porting your audience from one thing to another. But it seems like you've, you've got that figured out. It took me a bit to figure it out. But after spamming in my YouTube videos nonstop you have for to. two years, you have they, to. they seem to kind of have got it. They're like, oh, yeah. Nick's maybe going to do something on Twitch after he uploads his reaction video that he told us about <laughs> like, you know, every, yep. every day. Yep. Yeah. No, yep. That, I remember. Yeah. Yeah, early on, I I, I, still, I remember it was really strange, and, I, and I'm, I'm not going to mention the streamer. I, I remember rating a channel just to be supportive of another music streamer. That mm. said, I know there's a lot of musicians that were here before all these band guys came in. Yes. Um, and I rated, and the streamer said to me while I was in there, they're like, "Oh, you know, a lot of people feel like you just got it. You had it easy here because you're just, you know, a guy from a big band. You just showed up on stream and you had all these audience." And I was like, "I was like, all right, I just respectfully left and yeah, yeah. let the raid still happen, but." It was so difficult and it is so difficult to bring your audience from one thing to another. I mean, it took two and a half, three years for me to do that. Um, but I'm glad the groundwork was there because I'm, I'm able to see so many musicians who can get streaming within like a month or so. They already have like a good audience, which is awesome because it's, it's a matter of, again, when one of us do well, all of us do well. If I yes. can if I can show my audience of Trivium who've come over other cool streamers that I like, then we all grow together versus mm -hmm. it being like mine, mine, mine. I don't want these people in here because the reality is, I mean, my channel at first was like 95 99 100 just trivium fans first right and it's me teaching them about a new platform and nowadays i'd say maybe 75 to 85 percent trivium fans first and then the rest would be people that met me through here which is really interesting yeah i, I think a lot of people and, and streamers assume it's like a zero-sum game of well it's live so they watch me or they watch that person but they don't <laughs> understand that as the community grows and there's more people on Twitch that are interested in that type of content, they're going to want to look at multiple different places once they kind of get that little fix of like, oh my God, there's metal on here? Like what? Like mm -hmm. I, I didn't know that, right? And it still seems to kind of be a new thing coming on here. And also some of the streamers, I guess it tell gets a little envious sometimes without understanding, well, if you're really that annoyed that the people are watching this person instead of you, just be be better you know like just 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 be yeah. more entertaining you know like do something yep. that kind of grabs people's attention right and then it's yep. a win-win because then it's a platform of not one person doing everything and being super entertaining and everyone else just kind of being there to be there it's everyone is entertaining and people are gravitating towards them whether it be metal fans or non-metal fans and it's building up the whole community together which is absolutely mm -hmm. beautiful to see instead of you know this oh zero sum game kind mine of. mine mine yeah yeah that's that's absolutely and we see that so much in music too and oh, yeah. <laughs> that's why we've yeah that's that's why we've always been the band that wears all our favorite bands shirts and the classics but also right. talks about modern bands nonstop because we need to make sure the next generation of bands coming up are the bands that you know that have the same ethos as we do in music and metal and and heavy music and people that are making their own music for them there's you know, when we see the same bands in the States, we see the same bands being brought up by the same bands all the time. It's the same bands you hear on the radio, same bands mm -hmm. at every festival. That doesn't help anything. It yep. doesn't help any of the young bands coming out. And so that's why we've always been so vocal about we love these bands and these bands are the ones mm -hmm. to listen to. And there's even more. And I always want to find out who else there is and and help promote everything. So there's just so the world can have more. You know, I think you and I are allowed to allowed to be not, not selfish. We're allowed to talk about the genres that we love here. So there can be more of the bands that we love, more of the bands yes. playing the good music that we love, and less mm -hmm. of the stuff that I feel like gets enough love already. Yeah, I, I think that's that's super. That's very important. You know, building it as a whole, and like you mentioned, you tie back what you said before is like the conversion to Twitch. Also, is side note, uh, I've I've converted to like you know you convert to Instagram. You're like, hey, follow my Instagram. Even follow my Twitter. Mm -hmm fall Facebook, even though it's just old, old Instagram, you know, and it's, it's like you try to convert to Twitch. Sometimes it's a little tougher because people are like, what is Twitch, right? It's, it's yep. still a relatively smaller platform compared to like YouTube or like these mm -hmm. bigger ones, but it's, it's still going strong and has, you know, people that are really dedicated, right? And that's the thing. Like on YouTube, somebody might watch a video for five minutes and then get off on Twitch. People watch a stream for two hours. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like the average is or like, eight or 12 or yeah, <laughs> like it's, it's, yeah. it's ridiculous. So just this platform is definitely a tough one. And no matter how big your name is, like, sure, it'll help you a little. Um, but past that first stream of people being hyped that you're on here, yep. if you somehow aren't engaging in a streamer format and entertaining and keep people coming and get more people in there. 
um, they're gone. Like it's it's not yep. happening. You know, <laughs> like they're gonna dip. Yep. And it's it's it, there's nothing you can really do about it. You know, it's just it, it's it, it's a weird, really different thing. And that's why like seeing all the musicians come over here, it's been really interesting because I can tell some of them instantly adapt. Like I'll watch their first stream, be like, yep, they they get it. Like <laughs> they, they they have that talking with chat. They know the community is one of the most important things. And they're being entertained. They're funny. They're throwing jokes. They're comfortable. And you'll see sometimes some of them kind of come on here. You can tell they are so element and they're, they're very nervous. And they're just like, I know I'm supposed to play music here. So I will sit here, yeah. <laughs> play my songs, maybe look at chat once every two hours. And, yep. and, and, and that's it. And it's tough on here, man. It is its own it is. wild west. It really is. <laughs> and I'm seeing like a lot of like mus music industry people are like, whatever it may be record labels festivals like trying to come over here and doing what they normally do on here and it doesn't make sense or yes. people looking at it is like or people mm -hmm. i mean musicians i remember being asked by a couple musicians and sure it was the right question during the pandemic i guess but i got in this platform i never thought i'd make a penny off this platform i was like i just want to mm -hmm. connect with our audience further like that's all it was i yeah. was like we're not a press band we're not a band's band i want to talk to the people that think that that are interested in what food i'm eating i want to talk to those people <laughs> yeah. i want to show them what i'm into um so i remember early on i have some band guys like hey what would i make more money off of twitch or patreon i'm like i don't know man i haven't done the other one even, i just love this one even having that question coming into yep, twitch blew, is like yeah instantly like setting blew yourself it. up for failure if you're like yeah, i want to 100 percent to, to me i want to stream i want to be a youtuber to make money it's like that is the opposite of what you should have in terms <laughs> yes. of mindset. Because most people that get yep. there with, with streaming or YouTube, they they came a little bit ago and they came into here with just being like, this is fun. I like. Yep. And they were just obsessed with it and did it nonstop. And then they're like, oh, wait, people pay for this? <laughs> it's, it's, like, mm -hmm. it's like kind of a thing that comes kind of later. Um, so people exactly. coming in right away and they're like, man... I want to be rich. I want to be a streamer. And you even see like like polls in, in countries are like, when I grow up, it's not like astronaut not or doctor anymore. It's like, I want to be a streamer and YouTuber. And it's like, yeah. whoa, that is <laughs> different. <laughs> you know, like yes. That's that's not something even in my generation I really had when I was younger. That was it was not a job to be a YouTuber or a streamer still. It, that was like what like that's some weird oddball luck thing where just some weird people with cameras just decide to turn it on yeah. they had nothing else to do today right and yep. now it's like this is like a job a career it's respected by many and so many people are like i need to do this with my life and sadly a lot of it's sometimes just because they see the numbers and the fame and the you know the big mm -hmm. top people buying their bugattis and all that stuff instead <laughs> of realizing those people probably didn't have had more than 10 viewers for the first three years of like yeah. streaming you know what i mean it's crazy like i mean I, i'm a huge fan of nick Merckx, and i i saw him do, i got into him kind of when he was already blown up and i saw one of his posts he, he retweeted a thing he's like oh we had 150 people watching warzone today that's insane like that's was his old record when he started and to see that is so cool to see that growth and now he's just on top of the world but that is the you know that's the one percent of the one percent same thing with bands i mean we're not a huge band we're right in the middle mm. and ever since i was 13 i've wanted to be like a huge band we're not necessarily there mm. but I think when you reframe it, because I think definitely in the States, like the idea of success has been really bastardized. Yes. People think just, just like you and I have seen, like people think it means 20 cars and it means mansions and it means all this excess and all this stuff. But I think success is not having to worry about, can I pay for food tonight? Can I, mm. can I get my groceries? Can I keep my power bill on? And that's like, I think when people can reframe a little bit more like that or be like, Hey, I, I get to, you know, I, I get to work. Cause like there's so many people that haven't been able to work, yeah. um, but that's a whole nother, whole nother discussion. But yeah. Yes, it's it's an amazing amazing place. I'm so happy to see what you've been able to do, Thank what you. what I've been able to do here. It's it's amazing, and I and it's still any musician ever that's like, hey Matt, what do I do here? I've had people ask everything from like content to microphones to hardware to internet to scheduling, whatever it is. Like I'm always around to help out because I think the more people that are on here, the better. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely not taking away anything. Is all we're doing is bringing more people in. Mm -hmm. We're bringing more people who didn't know what the platform is. Same thing with you. You're bringing people from your world and from my world, and we're bringing them into this one new place yeah it's it's beautiful to see man and like i said, just thank you on behalf of the community for being kind of like one of the catalysts of again getting a bunch awesome. of people on here making it kind of a fun little hot spot for people to just interact differently you know if they want to talk to some of their favorite people they don't have to always 
go during the venue after the person just had a set. Exactly. Maybe they had a really bad set. So you have a yep. little bit of an awkward, you know, uh, conversation with the brand people in person. Yep. They can be on here, have fun, talk to some of the, you know, their favorite musicians and whatnot. And again, man, I, I owe you like huge claps. Thanks to you for being a Thanks, huge man. person that made that happen. And um, yeah, you. man. And for, of course, killing it in Trivium and just, just being one of the hardest working dudes i've literally ever had the pleasure of talking <laughs> to thank and you so much man. that goes for anyone i talk to i'm always they're like yeah matt's matt's the one who's he was grinding getting stuff done <laughs> you know so I matt appreciate again, that, man. thank you so much i know you have to head out um any last second words for a chat here um on, on my side yeah anyone that's ever looked at something in the world and said i want to do that try it see what you can do, put everything that you are into that. And if it doesn't happen there, at least you've proven to yourself that you can put that kind of energy into something and redirect that energy to something else. And it might take a couple misses, a couple tries to find out what your thing is. But when you find it mm. and when you've been able to put that, truly been able to put that work in it, then you know you can make things, you can make good things happen. I love it. Thank you so much, Matt. Guys, awesome. thanks so much, Matt. Matt Heafy, follow my dude up. It's Kichi. Uh, is this Matt? He oh, you changed it from yeah, Matt K Heafy. Of course, Matthew K Heafy. It's it's exclamation. Um, I mean, you know it's Matt. You probably only know I'm on Twitch because you know Matt's on Twitch. Like, let's be real here. <laughs> follow my dude up. Awesome, Check man. out the new Trivium record. And yeah, Matt, thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank I'm you so much, Nick. Kept to learn in waves right now and struggle with. Hell that. yes, <laughs> do it, do it, do it. All right, my friend. Um, it's all about that Ben 12th fret. The 12th. Da, da, da. It's almost. Damn it's almost bending to a major note. Okay. And when Paulo wrote that song originally, he wrote that as a joke. He wrote it and he was, he was really? writing KFC lyrics about <laughs> Colonel Sanders. And he played it for me before he tracked the lyrics or before he put the vocals on. And I was like, Paulo, this is incredible. Because this yeah. is right after we finished Shogun, which is a super proggy, very noty, crazy record. I'm like, Paul, this is insane. Yeah. He's like, really? <laughs> and I, he played it back. And I was like, I hear the words in waves. I was like, I hear like a scream in waves. And that, that's how it all came about. Perfect, dude. I'll, <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Thank you so much. Again, Matt, thank you so much for taking time out of your day, guys. Follow my dude, Thanks, Matt. Man. Show him the love. Have a beautiful time, man. Thank you so much. Thanks, my friend. Take care. You Later, too. dude. Thank, thank you. you.